So in this video, we're going to talk about naming epoxides. Uh, these are very reactive uh, molecules. And so there's actually two ways of naming them. Just, just as if, you know, so far we learned in organic chemistry, there's always, you know, an IUPAT name. And then there's the common name, something that you would, when you go in the lab, you will see on the reagent bottle. So uh, epoxides, you can usually name them with the, the suffix, right? Which is just ene oxide. And we'll tell you what this means in a minute. And then you could have the sub, uh, the prefix, uh, and that is equal to epoxy, whatever, right? And so this is where the IUPAT name comes in. So let's look at a couple structures and run through what do we mean. So this molecule here, right? What is the name of this molecule? What's the IUPAT name? Well, just as we said, the IUPAT name is always based on the longest continuous carbon chain. Now, we want to give the epoxide the lowest number possible. So I could start from here or I could start from here. I'm going to start from here because this will give my lowest number possible. So this is carbon one, two, three. Now I could start from here and this would be one, two, three. All right. So when we give the car, we want to give the, um, the epoxide the lowest number possible. So this will be one, two, three versus two, one. So here's how we do it. Our longest continuous chain is propane. So the parent chain is propane. We locate the substituent, which is going to be the epoxide in this case. And as a, and as a substituent, its prefix is epoxy. So on carbon one, two, we have, this is a one, two epoxy propane. All right, so name list your longest continuous chain and then list the substituent with this epoxy uh, as a substituent. It is called epoxy as a substituent, uh, recognizing epoxide. Now, what would be the common name for this or the, you know, the alkene oxide style? What would, what would be the name for this? Well, again, uh, this is something I should mention. If I take ethylene and react it in... This is called per acetic acid. I get an epoxide. All right. I get an epoxide. Now, this is where it comes from. All right. I could view this as an alkene that went to an epoxide. So the common name, the common name of this would be, okay, well, let's see. We're going to act as the longest continuous chain was a pro Propene, right? It, it was a propene. It was a propene, right? Because we have one, two, three, but we're going to pretend it's an alkyne. It's an alkene, right? We're going to pretend that we got this from an alkene, just as we did here. So the common name would be the longest continuous chain is propene, right? And then we say oxide representing the representing the epoxide where the al Alkene should have been where the alkene bond should have been. So this is propene oxide. And let's get in some more examples to kind of get the the concept straight in your head. So what if we wanted to name this? What would be the IUPAT name? Well, again, just as we learned in OrChem one, well, we have a ring here. This is cyclohexane. So this is cyclohexane. So the so the parent name is cyclohexane. Right? Now we want to give the epoxide the lowest number substituent possible. So we could call this carbon one and this is carbon two. So this is one, two, dash epoxy cyclohexane. Now, what would be the common name for this? The common name. What would be the common name for this? Well, again, we're going to say, OK, well, we're going to pretend that this was an alkene and we use some sort of peroxy acid to get it to an epoxide. So the common name for this would be cyclohexene. And then we attach the oxide, symbolizing that we have an you know, oxide attached there. All right. Let's do a couple more to get the concept again in your head. So what if we wanted to name this?
But if I wanted to name this molecule, what, what, what would I call it? What would be the IUPAT name? What would be the IUPAT name? Yeah. Well, again, I'm going to give my epoxy my lowest number possible. So I could come from here or I could come from here. I'm going to start from here because I see that my epoxy will get the lowest number possible. So this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. That's my longest continuous carbon chain. Now, on carbon two and three, you could see that we have the epoxy and we have a methyl there. Now, E comes before M. So this would be two, three epoxy two three epoxy dash five dash methyl uh, hexane so our longest chain is hexane right we're doing the iupat name so the longest continuous chain is hexane right so one two three four five six so that's our longest continuous chain methyl it's our longest continuous chain, and we have a 2,3-epoxy-5-methyl-hexane. Now, notice with all the IUPAT names, we end up with an alkane at the end. So, notice that with all our IUPAT names, we end up with an alkane. So, whether it's propane, methane, ethane, whatever. All right. Now, what would be the common name for this molecule? Well, again, uh, we're going to treat this as if this was an alkene. So, we're going to say this is 1 two, three, four, five, six. So this is an hexene. So this is an hexene. So this would be, we're going to locate our substituent. So this is five methyl. This would be five methyl. Well, where is our uh, um, alkene bond or pretended alkene bond? It's on carbon two. So this would be two hexene. And then we attach the oxide. To symbolize that our oxide is on uh, two, um, where the, the 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 double bond would be at. All right, so that would be the the common name. Now, uh, you will also see these uh, written as you'll also see these written as oxyrane. Um, it's not very common, not that I know of, but it, it's there. All right, so. Uh, You'll see these written as oxyrane at times, right? And so this, right? This simple molecule here, this is actually an ox. This is actually called oxyrane. So the epoxy itself is called an oxyrane. Now, this, the common name for this is ethylene oxide. Yes, you're gonna pretend that there was a double bond here, and we have one, two. So that's ethane. But we're gonna pretend that there's a double bond there. So that's uh, ethylene oxide. No, so this is also called an oxyrane. So let's let's let, let's label uh, you know a compound uh, using the the the, the 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 name oxyrane. So what if we have this epoxide here? I have this CH three here. All right. What what would be the name for this molecule using the oxyrane name? Well, again, remember we said this whole functional group, this epoxy here is an oxyrane. So I'm going to look at this as my oxyrane, which is my parent. And what is bonded to it? Well, I have, what is bonded to it? Well, our longest continuous carbon chain using the oxyrane only is just one, two. All right, our longest continuous chain is just one, two. Now on carbon two, we have these, these groups here. We have these groups here. So ethyl comes before methyl. So this is 2-ethyl dash 2-methyl oxyrane. So again, don't be confused as to why I get the two. Remember I said that this molecule here is called oxyrane itself. Now it has two carbons, one, two. So again, if we label this as the parent, which is oxyrane, so this is one, two, on carbon two, I have two different substituents. And so that's pretty much all it for naming epoxy. It's not pretty difficult. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of way of, uh, ways about going about naming these molecules, but that's the beautiful part part about organic chemistry.